our bodies are constantly bombarded by pathogens. But thanks to our immune system, we are only rarely aware of this. The immune system is comprised of a complex system of cells, tissues, organs, and circulating molecules. The body can achieve immunity in several ways. One of our first lines of defense is the skin and the oily, waxy matter it secretes. These prevent foreign materials, pathogens, and the parts of them that generate an immune response, the so-called antigens, from entering our body. The next line of defense is mucous tissue, saliva, and the gastrointestinal fluids that are high in hydrochloric acid. Should pathogens nevertheless breach these barriers, internal defense mechanisms spring into action. The main components of the immune system are white blood cells, also called immune cells. Each has a different function. One group is called lymphocytes, which can reach any place through the blood vessels and are continuously on patrol inside the body. When they encounter an intruder, they start to reproduce, attack, and send signals to other types of cells to do the same. This is what we call the immune response. There are a high number of lymphocytes in certain parts of the body, such as bone marrow and the thymus, as well as in lymph nodes, the skin, the spleen, the intestinal tract, and the tonsils. This is where they meet and exchange information, with the messages sent in the form of molecules called cytokines. These molecules differ from each other, and only those immune cells can receive them that have the right receptors. The main function of the immune system is to differentiate between the body's own cells, as well as the dangerous and harmless foreign elements in the body. A group of lymphocytes called T helper cells play a key role in recognizing dangerous intruders. These first go through an aptitude test where they are created in the thymus located in the chest. If the immune system is functioning correctly, only those can enter service that have passed muster and proven that they will not attack the body's own cells or such useful materials as food or the billions of good bacteria living inside our intestines. But if a harmful material enters the body, the immune system attacks, with the strength and quality of the attack regulated by the cytokine messages. The rapid, large-scale release of cytokines can, in some cases, lead to a cytokine storm, which is a pathological inflammation. In these cases, immune cells attack not only the pathogen, but the body's own cells and organs as well. However, in the course of a normal immune response, the various immune cells perform different tasks in the defense process. Then, through direct contact or cytokines, they inform the appropriate cells of the immune system. B lymphocytes, or B cells, produce so-called antibodies. The appropriate antibodies, killer T cells and killer cells, attach themselves to the pathogens. Antibodies prevent pathogens from entering healthy cells, reproducing or producing toxic materials. And killer cells kill pathogens as well as cells that have already been infected. Next, phagocytes are activated, which ingest the pathogens and dead cells, and then die themselves. The destroyed pathogens, dead white blood cells and tissue remains, can collect at the location of the immune response. This results in the formation of pus. Then, some of the T and B cells also die, because they have served their purpose. The remaining ones go on to become so-called memory cells. These remember the characteristics of a pathogen, and when they encounter the same type of pathogen again, they are able to produce much more and higher quality antibodies within a few days. Some pathogens, such as influenza viruses, are very diverse. Thus, memory cells cannot provide lasting protection against them. Vaccines provide efficient protection against several diseases that could otherwise lead to severe illness or even death. There are several types of vaccines. These deliver weakened or inactivated pathogens in full or in part or the blueprints of their antigens into the body. None of them can cause illness. 
the immune system easily kills these materials while remembering the characteristics of the pathogens, thus making it able to protect against their stronger versions as well later on. This is called artificially acquired immunity. There is also a lot we can do ourselves to strengthen our immune system. One of the most important is to drink a lot of liquids and to eat a balanced diet containing an appropriate amount of vitamins and minerals. In addition, regular exercise, avoiding lasting stress, and getting restful sleep all help keep the immune system balanced and in working order. Subscribe to our channel. Don't miss out on any new episodes.